Hello, my name is Stuart Burgess and I am the manager at Fritton Lake uh, and this is a short introductory talk to uh, Fritton Lake's association with uh, D-Day and the Second World War. After 1942, when a raid on Dieppe went wrong for the Allied forces due to bad planning, lack of suitable equipment and machinery, military commanders enlisted the help of Percy Hobart and the 79th Armoured Division to create a series of tanks uh, called Funnies that would not just fight in the conventional way but also provide a secondary role. This could be, for example, mine clearance through flails or bulldozing to move soil and sand, uh, ramps fitted to tanks to make them um, other tanks go up embankments, uh, as well as um, for scene carriers which were big coils of wood dumped into big ditches to let tanks cross and finally swimming tanks and Fritton Lake from about 1943 to 49 was used to trial and train men in the use of amphibious swimming tanks called DD tanks which was short for their code name duplex drive amphibious tanks. I'm of the impression here that prior to launching ramps being constructed later on in 1943 I'm fairly confident this was the main launching area for the tanks got lots of footage which show tanks being launched from here just straight off the bank and we've got post D-Day footage with tanks definitely going in at this point however having said that we've got other locations that could equally be as good the sketch or the picture in front of me is from 1946 after D-Day after the war had ended because the Americans weren't very favourable of the style of the uh, DD tanks because they couldn't fire when they were at sea so they created a Sherman with side floats because they were not happy with the screens on the main DD tank preventing the gun from firing so they developed floats and they launched this tank and tried it at Fritton Lake in 1946 and what's really curious is there's one solitary tree with this very distinctive Y in this location and behind me you can still see uh, the same tree uh, here today proving this point was the same location in 1946 Right, I have here a section of Bailey Bridge. This would have been used in a horizontal format like this. Because of its weight, I won't hold it like that. The holes, the stanions and the pins and the attachment here is all part of how it linked together. A bit like Meccano, really. Uh, they would have had in sections of RSJ like this, 10 foot long, and smaller box sections that would have slotted in to make a bridge and this was its primary role. A bailey bridge was used to span areas of water, particularly where bridges have been knocked out by the enemy. And in this case, this is part of the launching ramps that extended onto the lake and were supported at the far end by pontoons uh, and secured to the lake bottom by wire ropes. At the very end of this structure, there was a ramp that was elevated to between 12 and 18 degrees down which the tanks would then enter the lake. So a little bit of history still survives here. What we have on the ground here is some 22 mil thick wire rope, probably with a pulling capacity of 10 tons plus, possibly more, I really don't know. But it extends right the way through the ground and back up there. Whatever they were pulling, clearly it was beyond the strain of the wire rope and it broke. Um, and my best guess is because of the location of the scrapyard within 100 meters of here, this is where they would have recovered most sunk tanks from. Um, whether or not they dragged them back in the lake to this point or not, I do not know. But I am aware from comments from other people, particularly divers, that when the tanks went down, the driver was always in the bad habit of putting the brakes on first. And so when they had to recover the tanks, of course the brakes were on, so they couldn't pull it through the silt and the, the ground. And divers had to go into the tank and to release the brake pedal before towing them out. And they would have used trees as anchor points to pull out uh, and winch the, the tanks back in. So, right, we found this a couple of years ago. Let me lift it up for you. Alright, I can just about lift that. You can see it's a large piece, what looks like an RSJ. In actual fact, I think it's from one of the Bailey bridges. Just put it down there. But this end here has actually sheared off, it's broken. I don't think that's a cut weld, and that's a natural edge. And I think possibly this is broken possibly because of a tank running across it and the sheer weight of the tank has sheared it. Um, maybe it's from the ramp 
but equally it could be lumps of scrap because when they had to try these tanks on the ramps they were obviously just full of personnel, five crew and in order to simulate a tank fully loaded with ammunition and uh, equipment they will probably load it with lumps of iron anyway and this would be the equivalent of a certain number of, of bombs or, or charges and they might have just used it as, as a ballast if you like because a tank going down a ramp unloaded is 30 tonne but fully loaded is 33 tonne and how it performs in the water will all relate to its weight uh, hence why this was probably used. When the tanks left the tank park about a quarter of a mile in that direction they arrived at a series of four landing stations and these were large Bailey bridges extending onto the lake of which this is the first of four that extend in a westward direction and there's an access on my right of a concrete platform again with uh, a Bailey bridge structure extending 40 to 50 feet out on the lake and supported by pontoons. At the end of the structure there was a ramp that would be elevated to 12 to 18 degrees according to the weight of the tank to allow the tank to go into the water carefully. If it was too steep the problem was the tank would take on water as it entered the, the uh, water and probably sink and if it was too shallow as the tank went into the water the propellers would catch and it would rip off the back of the tank. So this was a popular area where accidents occurred. Now sadly on the 22nd of June 1943 uh, Trooper Leslie Lloyd lost his life here because he was with the uh, Nottinghamshire Sherwood Yeomanaries and his tank succumbed to hitting the ramp and sinking and because of his stature he was unable to leave the driver's compartment with speed uh, and they managed to get his body out but unable to recover him and he sadly died. And he was the only casualty at Fritton Lake uh, during the war, uh, which is a shame. You can imagine in 1943, tanks coming down a trackway to this turning point here, which is a big concrete raft again, and they would have slewed round and headed down this channel here onto a landing craft mock-up ramp, which is made from a Bailey bridge, which was three stories high with wire ropes securing the ramp uh, and they would go into the lake here and at three other locations. And you can look around to see the amount of earth that's been shifted in order to create this landscape. It's really quite a big engineering task to make this work. Uh, you know, the mounds are six, seven feet high, uh, just pushed up by bulldozer so the tanks could operate in here. But you can see they didn't need a lot of room really. I mean, it's only 10 foot wide here and to slew round, incredible really, fantastic bit of landscape. Really.